Today on the American Garage, we're going to tackle a big problem that we've had with the truck ever since engine rebuild. The problem the truck's been having is that it dies at intersections, it sputters, uh, it's running way too rich. Uh, it, it doesn't like to go into fifth gear, and when it does, it stammers and stutters and stumbles down the road. Uh, overall, the drivability is very poor. So the solution is going to be uh, what Sarah had found on Sarah Intuned, and we are going to do the same thing to the truck. Goodbye OBD1, hello brand new, fully customizable, engine computer. We're also going to put a wideband oxygen sensor in there uh, to help the, the, pro, the, the computer work better. Plus, if you have the wideband, you can use the auto-tune function where it will teach itself, and I like that, so I'm going to use that because if you don't have the wideband, it won't auto-tune itself. We're also going to delete the uh, EGT and put this block plate in its place. Okay, so let's go through what I got in my box and I'll show you exactly what we have going on. First, we have our wideband oxygen sensor. Now, this oxygen sensor has got the connector on it already, so you can plug it into the existing wiring harness. However, it does not plug up exactly like the other one does. It has more connections. So we are going to have to modify the wiring harness slightly. And there's a couple of different ways that it gives us to do that. And we'll go through that. But first, we're going to have to modify the wiring so we can put this guy in the truck. So that's the wideband oxygen sensor. Then we get, uh, I've got, uh, this is, uh, the uh, the block out plate for the EGT. So uh, in Texas we can delete the EGT uh, because it's an older truck and as long as we keep our catalytic converter we are perfectly legal. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna delete the EGT. Uh, I don't, you know, EGTs are for emissions of course but they don't make the engine run its best. And here's my idea about it. If the engine is running its best and most efficient, you're going to have the least emissions, right? There are like three or four different systems on this truck, all fighting against the performance and against each other to try to make uh, the emissions come out to where they want them. Now that's fine when they're new, but once they start getting old and these emission systems don't work so well, the exhaust gets actually worse than if you didn't have them at all. So the best and most long-term solution, in my opinion, is let's go ahead and delete the EGT. And we'll also program the engine so it will run its most efficient. Now. The next thing is the computer itself. Now, I got this computer from uh, Stinger Performance. Now, what Stinger Performance does is they take the old OBD1 box and the pinout, and they remove the computer, and they put a modern, up-to-date computer. It's a, called a Megasquirt computer. Now, if you know anything about cars and electronics and such, a Megasquirt computer is a generic uh, computer for a car engine that you can program for any engine. It's kind of like buying um, a Raspberry Pi little computer and you can do anything with it as long as you know how to hook it up and make it do whatever you want it to do. Well, it's kind of the same thing with car computers. So Megasquirt makes their fully adjustable computer. Now what Stinger does is they take that Megasquirt computer, they pin it out to the Ford OBD1 connector, and they send us a program that goes with it and a set of instructions of how to put this thing together. 
so that you can put it into your your old OBD1 Ford uh, car, which we have. Now, the same computer and the same uh, system uh, ran not only the Ford Ranger, but the Mustangs, uh, which a lot of them had the four-cylinder engine, same as the Ranger does. And uh, even the Ford V8 engines ran off the same computer or something very similar. So uh, all those cars and trucks out there um, can be upgraded with one of these. Now, another thing that it has besides being fully programmable, and I can plug my USB right into the side of it, it also needs um, a map line to have a, a, a vacuum source which plugs in right here so that the map sensor can do its job. Uh, I don't think there is one. There isn't one on the existing. They had, had to add this later on. And this is going to give us more complete data on what the engine is doing and how it's running. The beauty of this system is you can plug a computer or a laptop in through the USB port and you can see exactly what the engine is doing at any given time while it's running even. So that's going to be a great advantage for us. And if any of the sensors or any of the systems are not sending their data, we're going to know it. With OBD1, a lot of it's guesswork. So goodbye, OBD1. Hello, brand new computer. We also have in the box uh, a USB uh, wire to, to hook it up to the computer. And we've got a bunch of uh, different wire connections that will be needed for the harness. And I'm not exactly sure what these are about just yet, but we'll, we'll discover that as we go along. And then also, We've got all these little jumper, uh, uh, wire jumpers. And you, know, you see these a lot in, in computers. And what's going to happen is they send me a bunch of jumpers and I'm going to have to open up the computer and using their instructions for my specific model of engine, I'm going to have to put the jumpers in to connect the different systems to the computer. So it will see everything. That part we have to do ourselves. So without any further ado, first thing we're going to do is get the computer ready to put the jumpers in. So I got my new computer right here. I got my little jumpers and I got my instructions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this computer so we can put the jumpers in. Okay, now I see where we've got all these little pins and I've got to figure out for my engine which pins need to be jumpered. So that's going to be the next step. Alright, so I have got my box open of course and I did a little bit of research. I printed out my instructions. And all the jumpers are on the green board. They're not on the black board on top here. See, there's this black one. Okay, so we have to find the jumpers. And for our engine, it's going to be JP1, JP2, JP14, and 19 are the only ones that we need to put in. So I'm looking at my board and finding all of my jumpers. And JP1 is way up in the corner. So, first thing we're going to do, get a jumper on JP1. I'll put some, I'll just dump these out here and get my needle nose. And I'll put that on there. Be real gentle with these, but you got to make sure they're firmly in place. There we 
go. There's JP1 in there. And JP2. Over here. Now, just to give you a basic layout. All right. So it kind of goes like this. Up here in this upper corner is where JP1 is. And then they just, the numbers progress down as it goes around the board. Now see there's a JP1 on this blackboard. Don't, don't put it in there, okay? That's not one for us. Okay. Now, so I'm going to continue on. Get my next one. JP2 is right here. We're going to get a jumper on JP2 next. There we go. So we have JP1, JP2, JP14 is the next one on our list. And JP14 is up here to the left side of JP1. So we'll put it in there. Just like that. Make sure it's pushed all the way down. There we go. So now we have JP1, JP2, JP14, and we need JP19. But on JP19, it wants to be jumpered just on uh, numbers 2 and 3 because it has three um, little connector wires. So you either install it on 1 and 2 or you install it on 2 and 3. Yeah, JP19. It's right here in the middle. And so we want to put it on pins 2 and 3. Now, only one is labeled. Number 1. So number 1 is on this side. So I'm going to put it on these two over here. I use my needle nose plier to help it make it a little bit easier to put together. I only get it started with the needle nose and then I push it down with my finger. There. So now circuits 2 and 3 on JP19 have been jumpered. So now I have all of my jumpers in. Now these are the basic jumpers. There are other options and we can go through some of those. All right, so now this is the jumpers table where we can look at some of the other options that you can put on. Now some people have electric fans and so they'll want to use the, the electric fan control JP3. Some people will want to have their turbocharged, so they're going to want boost enable, which is JP9. And uh, so there are different um, jumpers for different functions to turn them on in here, in the computer. So I think that we're going to be okay. Uh, we don't have a tachometer, uh, so we don't. We're not going to put that in there. Um, I do have, uh, we could, we, I need to look and see if JP29, the barrel and mass air, the MAF selector, um, needs that or not for an internal barometer sensor. I'm not sure if we have that or not, probably not, but I will check it. But what I'm going to do is go through and, and check and see if there's anything else on this list that we might want to use. So these are all optional things. Okay, so like some people, they are going to put an electric fan in. I'm not. So they'll go ahead and put the jumper in for the electric fan control. Uh, I'm not going to do that, so I'm not going to put the jumper in there. 
you don't have to to uh, have the function it, if you do it now it'll provide the function whenever you're ready for it okay so now the computer is put all together I double check that JP 29 and that's if you had an external mass airflow sensor which we do not so we're gonna be good to go so I'm gonna put the computer back together get ready for the next step thanks for watching the American Garage like this video, hit the like button and leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe 